Steve Findlay is a pioneering climber from the southwest of England. Over the last 30 years, he's climbed new routes from the highest Himalayan peaks to the shale cliffs of North Devon. This winter, he's off to the west coast of Thailand. As climbers explore ever more remote islands in the Andaman Sea, they're increasingly coming across the trade in bird's nests and the gangs of bird's nest collectors closely guarding some of the islands. Nest collecting is regarded as one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Steve hopes to meet up with a group of collectors and understand more about this extraordinary trade and learn the climbing techniques they've developed over the last 1,000 years. Two years ago, we were climbing off the west coast of Thailand in this little island, Lao Liang. Um, big, big rocky limestone island. And this group of local people came and asked us to help them, help them get up into caves. These guys are bird's nest collectors. So we thought, wow, fantastic. So a small group of us went round with them and we did several routes between E3 and E5. And uh, every cave we got into, there was bamboo, evidence that they'd been there before. But on the outside, there was no evidence at all. No marks, no bamboo, no ropes. And we just could not work out how they got there. So it's fascinated me ever since to find out a bit more about these people, to go back and spend some time with them and find out more about this amazing business they're involved in. So yesterday I got an email from a friend in Thailand, Pom, who works on Lao Liang, and he said he knows bird's nest climbers, who uh, bird's nest collectors who climb bamboo and they're willing to help us. So we're going to go out there. Um, after Christmas, New Year, we're going to go out there and join up with these guys and with a bit of luck, it'll be a lot warmer than today. Off the west coast of Thailand lie hundreds of small limestone islands stretching out into the Andaman Sea. Most of them uninhabited and few ever reached by tourists. Lao Liang is one of those small islands lying in the heart of the Koh Petra Marine Reserve, about 120 kilometers south of the popular tourist areas of Krabi and Phuket. This is uh, the first route we put up here. The guys came around this side of the island, pointed up at that cave, nosed the boat up to the, the crag there. We climbed uh, E2, E3 sort of line up to that triangular cave. Um, and inside that cave, there's a tube goes up into the island. And uh, we didn't follow it, but I guess that's what the guys have done. They've got bamboo up there somehow in the past. And, um, and follow the tube up, and maybe there's a big cavern up there somewhere. It'd be worth going and having a look sometime. It's been two years since Steve was last on Lao Liang. He's worried that the nest collectors Pon has found might be a different group to the ones he worked with two years ago. And they might not be willing or able to show him the traditional climbing techniques he hopes to learn. For centuries, Lao Liang remained uninhabited the only visitors being passing fishermen and nest collectors. But that changed when tourists started arriving. A small resort sprang up on the island eight years ago, catering for Thai tourists who were interested in diving on the pristine reef just off the beach. But soon climbers followed, looking for unclimbed rock. And what they discovered was a climbing paradise with almost limitless potential. Over the last five years, more than 70 new routes have been climbed on some of the best rock found anywhere in Thailand. Thank <laughs> you. 
Pioneering climbers soon found they weren't the only ones interested in the vast limestone cliffs. Nest collectors harvest swiftlet nests from caves all over the island. The nests the birds build are made of saliva and attached to the cave walls. Legend has it, fishermen stranded on a remote island were forced to survive by eating the nests. When rescuers eventually arrived, the fishermen seemed more youthful and surprisingly full of life. The story reached the court of the Chinese emperor and his chef created bird's nest soup so the emperor could benefit from this newfound elixir. 1500 years later, bird's nest soup is enjoyed by diners all around the world, still hoping to experience its legendary effects. Each team of collectors has a group of caves, which they return to each year during the spring to harvest the nests. Throughout Southeast Asia, nest collecting is a multi-million dollar industry, supplying nests to restaurants around the world. Bird's nest soup can sell for as much as $100 a bowl, which means that access to the caves is closely guarded. The nest collectors are on their way. Before they arrive, Steve wants to find out as much as he can about them and the industry they work in to avoid the problems they've had in the past, where the relationship between the climbers and the nest collectors has been full of suspicion and misunderstanding. This is Pon, Steve's friend on Lao Liang. It was his email that led Steve back to the island with a promise that he had found nest collectors for Steve to climb with. Uh, for bonus collector, they, they get, uh, they get uh, a lot of money that they collect because um, it's quite dangerous for them compared with another job. But um, you know, they can make money in uh, you know, one week, it's around 2,000, uh, you know, around 30,000 per week, depending on how much they can get, um, they can collect the uh, bird's net. Good. Um, Pond's made a phone call for us uh, to the guys over on Sukorn, and it seems that the um, it's the same setup as two years ago uh, that we helped the guys put the ropes up on the other side of the island. Uh, we put half a dozen or so ropes up into caves so they can get up and collect the nests. And uh, it seems that uh, they're quite happy to come over for two or three days and uh, show us, demonstrate how they climb the bamboo, get up into the caves. So uh, yeah, pretty positive, it's looking good. Mike Weissman is the managing director of the resort on Lao Liang and has had to negotiate with the nest collectors to develop the island. The way it works in Thailand is there's a chain of islands and different bird's nest groups will, or mafia teams, whatever you want to call it, will bid on a chain of islands. And the group that offers the government the most money for a five-year contract, a seven-year contract, wins exclusive rights to collect the bird's nests um, from the swallow birds uh, the sell you know on the market. Well, as the rumors are, which seem pretty correct, is that that means they also, if they think you're going and trying to steal birds' nests, you know, they have the right to, to shoot you. You know, a funny, you know, just as a funny aside, like if they're hanging out here, that you know, monitoring the cliffs, and they want some whiskey or some beers, they'll call up their boss, who will call upon, and we have to give them alcohol. You know, kind of, you can't upset them. Trevor Messiah, a climber from the UK, has almost single-handedly pioneered new routing on Lao Liang and has had more to do with the nest collectors than most climbers. I mean, the first year we didn't even see them. We just got like relayed messages through uh, the manager here that suddenly we couldn't climb because of the bird's nest. Um, and then we managed to agree that we could actually climb, put up new routes and drill and make noise on the, uh, on the cliffs here. And then eventually, they kind of sauntered over, a whole team of them. It looked pretty much like a, um, a kind of a, a mob-handed kind of gang, really. A whole bunch of them came over, and the, the main man looked very much like a James Bond villain, you know? Kind of a big mole on the side of his face with a long, long bit of hair kind of sticking out of it. And uh, they kind of sat around and, and decided that they wanted us to get into some caves for them. So uh, we kind of agreed that we'd probably go and do that. Great, the guys are here. The, uh, the skiff from Sukorn's just turned up. Uh, one, two, three, four guys. And um, yeah, brilliant. Really excited to wonder where they were going to turn up or not, but uh, here they are. The nest collectors remember Steve and seem happy to make a plan to take him out the following day. But it's going to be a struggle to make them understand that he wants to get involved, not just watch them climb. 
There is bamboo, bamboo yeah, pole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bamboo. 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 Yeah. And then if we can go around the island, and here is ropes hanging down. Yeah, yeah. And, and ropes hanging down here. And here, the ones that we put up two years ago. If we can go around and see those again. Two years ago. Yeah. You were here then? I know you, you were here two years ago when we went round on the boat, climbed up and put the ropes up. Yeah. Steve has told them that he wants to learn to climb bamboo. The group is quiet. It's hard to know if they've understood. Yeah. And then, Singapore? Mm, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Okay, Taiwan. And how much, how much money? One kilo. One kilo. One kilo. Oh, can they? The team seems surprised that Steve wants to learn the traditional techniques of bamboo pole climbing. They don't seem very keen on the idea. It's unclear whether this is because they're wary of Steve and believe it's too dangerous to teach him, or whether they've lost the skills and are now reliant on climbers here on Lao Liang to reach new caves high on the cliffs. Pons promised me a translator. I really need one at the moment with this guy. I think he's really wondering what he's got himself involved in here. What I've managed to find out so far from the guys is that a kilo of good quality nest is about 15,000 baht. That's about 250 pounds. And I was amazed to find out that these guys can earn up to 450 pounds a week. That's a huge amount of money for this part of the world. Mike Weissman reckoned that the license to collect nests in this area is about a million dollars a year. This was big business. No wonder they've been wary of climbers coming to the island and disturbing the birds. Next morning, just after dawn, the team set off with Steve to the neighbouring island of Lao Liang South. The boat's really low in the water. I'm not sure it was designed for six people. And it's rather scary that three of them are sat on petrol cans smoking. They're going to teach Steve how to climb a bamboo pole. The simple technique of leaning a pole against a cliff is one of the oldest and allows the nest collectors to access caves up to 25 metres up the cliff. What's this old pole like? How old is this then? This pole is 22 metres high. They've decided to throw Steve in at the deep end. I've seen this massive bamboo pole a few times before kayaking around the islands, but I never thought I'd get a chance to climb yeah. it with these guys. Ah, feet in here. Ah. Yeah. This is E, the team's main climber. He's been put in charge of looking after Steve. On closer inspection, the bamboo is actually tied to a length of rope, which creates a series of footholds, making the pole considerably easier to climb. Well, he doesn't speak a lot of English, but he speaks enough to say that the bamboo pole is no okay. Um, it wobbles, there's termite holes in it. Uh, it's not attached to anything very much at the top. So, um, better go and give it a go, I suppose. From the small rocky shore, it's impossible to see if the top of the pole is attached to the cliff. The nest collectors don't seem to know or care. Our, our man E uh, gave us a quick demo, tucked his bare feet into uh, the loop between uh, the rope and the bamboo, and um, shimmied up it a few couple of metres, then came back down, quick demonstration. Yeah, that looks okay. No? These? Nothing. Just like this? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> well I can give it I'll give it a go in bare feet and let's uh, see what happens then. You show me. When I when I when I go in, you say, okay. I'll try. I'll try it up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fuck. That's a good start. The rope's just broken. 
<laughs> five years old. I think this is more like 500 years old. Look, it's just first go, it's snapped. He recommends just pulling at the rope, feet on the rock. I don't fancy that with bare feet, really. My feet aren't hard enough yet. So uh, I'm going to retreat to rock shoes and give it a go that way. Hands on the rope and then feet on the rock. The nest collectors seem to have forgiven yeah. Steve for breaking the rope on his first attempt and are keen to see him climb. Uh -huh. Steve needs to be careful as the base of the pole is surrounded by jagged rocks. The pole is largely rotten and the nearest hospital is five hours away. This rope's about 11 mil and it's only just thick enough to pull on. The rock's steep here and I'm not getting a great deal of purchase with my feet. <coughs> when I can get my hands wrapped around the knot, then that's not so bad, but just pulling straight on the rope, that's hard work. And there's a horrible feeling, if anything breaks up here, I don't get any chance. Uh, that's not so bad. I'm just terrified the rope's gonna snap. Deposit me on them boulders. Uh, retreat to the safety of the rock. That's a bit more like it. Ah, that's, okay, it's not so bad really, but. Huh? This one? It's okay? Fucking hell. Pulling on the, um, the nice thick marine hawser was a um, pretty scary moment but uh, I've been climbing for a long time now and I've had many many situations in uh, my climbing career where uh, you just got to make a decision it's either up or down really and you don't know the consequences of um, either route really because sometimes going back down can be as dodgy as continuing on up and it's just straight hand over hand solo. So, and how far? Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and think about it for a moment. And work out some bottle. Um, you've just gotta make that commitment and go for it. There's no point in being half-hearted in that sort of thing. It's like new routing on trad. Um, you don't know what's up there, but you've got a reasonable piece of gear in and you decide to go for it. Except in the situation with this rope, there was no reasonable bit of gear. And uh, if the marine hawser had come undone, or broken, or if it was badly frayed up above and it snapped, then that commitment would have resulted in doom, really. Seems reasonably solid. Can't see what it's tied off to. So. Huh? It's okay, this one? Huh? Okay. Okay, all right, it goes nothing then. There's a realization that these young guys like E and um, and this, this whole team, they do this, this is their bread and butter, this is how they make their living. They drive around the Andaman Sea in this little skiff and they pull up onto rocks and they just launch up ropes to make money, to feed their families and in, it's a pretty amazing way of earning a living really. Not so bad, I think I'll crawl into the chimney a bit. Take the load off a tad, bridge out across the groove. <sighs> this rope's pretty khaki, I reckon. It's, it's a waterfall in this monsoon, bits falling off it. It's not so bad. The terrifying bit is not knowing what it's tied off to. Could be some bush up there or some local guy's idea of a belay, but it's held. <coughs> not so bad, really. Not so bad.
first we came up the, uh, up the rope and then scrambled up the gully to where there's some trees and then scrambled up batshit uh, up into a cavern that is probably 50 metres high, 20 or 30 metres across and it's lined with uh, stacks of bamboo going right up into the apex of the roof. But it seems that they just don't come up here anymore or come up so far because this bamboo down here is just full of termite holes and I'm kind of assuming that the rest of it is like that as well because when I point up and ask E if he's been up here, he just sh shakes his hand and says, mm. so I guess they've just lost the skills to replace these amazing bamboo structures. It's okay, it's, it's good. Yeah, uh, I think I think he's saying he keeps looking at these little marks and uh, holes in it. I suspect it's full of termites. There's holes all the way up, peppered everywhere. Maybe termites, maybe some sort of uh, uh, wood boring stuff. But he's just said he thinks it might snap. You think it's good or break? Mm. Yeah, I think he's not too keen on going up there. Um, peppered, peppered with holes. The large chamber has many smaller tunnels leading off it. Steve climbs higher into the cave and waits for E. He's very keen for us to go up into this cave. There's a very interesting style platform here and it's fairly solid. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a go in a minute when E gets over here. I think he wants us to go into that cave. Here. It's dark, small, and there might even be some nests in there. I had no idea this cave was so huge. From the sea, you just wouldn't know it was here. Most of the caves we've been into have been small and constricted, but this one's enormous and complicated. It didn't even occur to me to bring a torch this morning, but now we've got to depend on his shaky little thing. He has led Steve into a smaller cave passage at the back of the main cave, and in the pitch darkness, deep in the cave, they find swiftlet nests. These are the first nests I've ever seen, and I'm really surprised at how small they are and how they're just glued onto the rock. They look beautiful to me, but he's doing his handshaking thing again, saying they're no good because there's feathers and little bits of twigs stuck in them. I think he's trying to tell me that these aren't the sort of nests they're interested in harvesting. The swiftlet nests he and his team are interested in are made purely from saliva and are almost totally white and are found in some of the remotest corners of the cave. The first day has been brilliant. Climbing up that bamboo pole was just so exciting, such good fun getting up into that cave. I think I did okay today showing them I can climb bamboo and get down safely. I'm hoping they've got something even more interesting lined up for me tomorrow. Looks like the bird's nest guys are off for a bit of a session, but I think I'll give that a miss. I'm pretty knackered. I just need something to eat really, and a beer, and prepare myself for tomorrow. I would try to get the, uh, the, uh, the bamboo climbers going. Um, I think they had a bit of a late one last night, so uh, we've got the driver and the main man ready. Um, the rest, I don't know where they are. Our translator, Gob, is uh, trying to roust them out now, but it's uh, getting to be a slow process. Steve waits for the rest of the nest collecting gang to get up and contemplates the day ahead. He's asked the leader of the group, Jirowat, to take him to a cave where they can find pure white nests that are ready for harvesting. Having survived yesterday, the boss seems happier and a bit more relaxed about having me along. And with Gob's help, I'm starting to learn something about how they operate. Okay. And you? No? Today, they're going back to Lao Liang South. As the boat turns slowly towards the shore, Steve gets to see what they have in store for him today. I've seen this massive feature before, and I'm sure that's where we're going. I've always wanted to climb this ladder every time I've paddled past it. It's incredible. 
The ladder is 70 meters high and made from driftwood, short sections of bamboo, string and in places the large marine hawser. Uh, well, we're going to get in, get in close, hop out. I think the tide's still going down, so I have to be careful with the boat. And up that shaky looking ladder over there, which is uh, two years old. They change it every two years, apparently. And uh, oh, there's a big rope going up it as well. It's a bit more promising. I really wonder how he feels about doing this job on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a dangerous business. These guys are traveling around the sea in a little open boat, calling in at really wild islands and climbing some really, really dodgy stuff. I, he's 28, so maybe he's been doing this job for 10 years, I don't know, but he's accumulating a lot of risk in this, uh, in this trade of his. And maybe he's going to do it for another 10 years. He's exposing himself to an enormous amount of danger. Um, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd love to know, get inside his head, I'd love to know how he feels every day when he's launching up a bit of rope. Does he wonder, you know, maybe a year since he's been to that rope, who knows what happens to that rope in the meantime. There could have been rock fall up in the cave, the monsoon might have lashed the rope about and abraded it, the bamboo is obviously rotting, we've seen a lot of termite holes in the bamboo. This is a truly dangerous profession these guys are engaged in. To film Steve climbing, the team needs E's help to get a camera to the top of the ladder safely. But as E disappears into the cave, with little sign that he will return for the camera, the team are left with a problem. Al, the camera assistant, volunteers to solve the problem by climbing the ladder with a rope. I wasn't really sure if Al was up for this, but he really wanted to be part of the adventure. But I really should have tried harder to stop him. So I set off up the ladder, immediately realised that all the rungs were effectively were just driftwood and they weren't taking my weight at all so I'm, I'm pretty much with my hands I'm going up the vertical ropes taking as much weight off my feet as I possibly can and um, a couple of the rungs were missing so I had to sort of pull up but I couldn't quite get my feet on the rock because it was pretty much free hanging it looked fairly steady from the boat, but once you're on it, you realise it's very steep. And I think I was about 10 or 15 metres up and I'm beginning to realise actually this is a bit harder than I first realised. And um, one of the rungs snapped, but the rung below that had already broken and I had to do a, a full pull up. And then I couldn't touch the rock with my foot and I'm thinking, oh gee whiz. This is far more serious than I first realised. So all I could do was put my knee on the rung next to me and hope that it stayed there. Al is in the unenviable position of being stuck 18 metres up a bamboo ladder on a remote island, unable to go up or down. Right, Al was going to go up and um, fix a rope for us to get cameras and things up but uh, it's obviously a lot harder than it looks this is a lot of the rungs are falling out the sticks are rotten the strings fairly rotten the main ropes are cool but uh, the rest of it is two years old and it's been rotting away big time no I don't think so you're in uh, you're in free space after that and you're not gonna like it Look, I'm just saying I'm gonna get over this step yeah and then I'll stop at that that just there. I think what we're going to do is uh, get our, uh, our bamboo climber to go up there and um, bring the cameras up. If we can find a good belay at the top there, we'll be OK. Most of the nest collectors seem happy to sit on the beach and watch the drama unfold. It's left to E to come to Al's rescue. You see where we're going. I think the big cave and then beyond there, the big cave continues up for apparently about 70 metres. That's where all the birds live, way up in the top. The ladder really is shaky. After watching Al struggling on this thing, it's obviously not going to be easy. Even he made it look hard. My plan is just to climb the ropes, really, and not depend on the rungs. Right, last, last 10, uh, maybe 15 metres now. And 
Yeah, this ladder's much nicer up here. The occasional knot, rungs are closer together. Only a few broken rungs. Very, very glad it's not an ant tree we've just been through. These ants are murder around here. Hot work, dripping all over. I drank two liters so far this morning and that's all gone, that's for sure. Looking forward to the cool haven of the cave up there. See what the next stage is like. All held together with little skinny green twine. But it seems to have done a good job of it. It feels pretty solid. Masses of old stuff. Masses of old split bamboo behind. The guys in the old days used. Ah, uh, it's, it's quite nice up here. If it was like it was at the bottom all the way, it'd be big time, big time scary. Broken, rotting rungs. But up here, it's a much better nick. Maybe they repaired this bit last year. And left the lower bit. But I guess the sea gets up quite a long way in the monsoon, big winds and waves trash the bottom section. Um, but up in the cave, we went up the cave another 30, 40 meters and looked around and there's bamboo, like stacks of three, four pieces of bamboo held together with string and then tied into little nubbins on the wall with uh, one, two meter, millimeter string. Um, there's another place where there's a shaft goes down, um, there's bamboo down there and uh, old, it looks like they used to use uh, strips of bamboo which they platted together and also um, the long tree roots that hang down the, uh, the crags in Thailand. Uh, we was talking about that and they just cut off big lengths of this tree root and they use that for climbing around in the caves. It must have been, I can see why a lot of guys died. Heading off into side tunnels. Strange muddy path. Running up here, years and years of bird droppings and bat shit. More old bamboo. One lovely little nest here. It's climbed up to the top of this rift and it's a uh, beautiful style flow all over the place. And up in the top of this roof, there's a little alcove and there's a lovely little swiftlet nest attached to the rock. In a, and in fact, there's, there's two here. And uh, they're a bit harder than I expected. I was expecting something quite squishy, but can you hear this? Yeah. That's me tapping the nest. So it's quite hard. And I understand they use scrapers to get the, uh, the, the nest off the wall. Waiting to climb back down, I can only marvel at the skill and determination of the guys who first accessed these caves in search of the bird's nests. The locals call it white gold. Meeting the guys again and climbing with them has been an amazing experience. I feel really privileged that they've come over here and taken me up into some of these fantastic caves. It's been a real honor that they've trusted me enough to take me up into some of their secret nest locations, something I think they've probably never done before. Nest collecting is undeniably one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. To most people, this would seem a ridiculously dangerous way of earning a living. These guys seem relaxed and happy and they're enjoying themselves. The whole adventure has been very special. We came out here on an off chance and it's paid off. Not quite how I expected, but that's what adventures are all about. You never really know what's gonna happen. I had so many questions I wanted answering and I don't think I found the answer to any of them. Having survived the experience, and only cause minor damage to the pole and little more damage to the ladder. I hope I can come back next year and maybe help out with the harvest.
next year I'm going to come out and meet the boss, find out how this industry really works. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs>